expertise and knowledge. Uh, we introduces a new uh, era that is startup service cell. NDIC aspires to provide support, mentorship and consulting for startups budding from Indian Institute of Science through our new startup service cell initiative. We are looking forward to providing mentorship and support in the areas of product strategy, product ma management strategies, human resource management, fundraising, marketing consultancy, basic legal advisory, sources and networking. With for more details, write us on team.ndiac at the rate of iac.ac.in. Uh, thank you. With this, I would like to hand over to Dr. Tulasi to discuss more about incense and this problem. Thanks, Nobin. Uh, a quick introduction about incense for those of you who are here for the first time. Uh, incense is an incubator and the role of an incubator is to facilitate uh, de-risking of an idea to help improve its odds success. So what is Incense? It's a technology business incubator. We are located at the uh, Center for Nanoscience Engineering Science Department at IASC. Uh, we are funded by Government of Karnataka and our goal is to support and entrepreneurs and startups and this is not restricted to IASC alumni. Our focus is on nanotechnology, deep science and interdisciplinary ideas and uh, like any, like most incubators, we also offer uh, workspace access to the sense facilities, which is something unique to us and uh, technical and business mentoring, facilitating IP protection. And we uh, we conduct trainings and workshops towards uh, capacity building. And today is one of those sessions. Uh, as uh, you know, one of the important aspects of a startup is get uh, some funding and uh, BIRAC, uh, BIRAC uh, is uh, um, kind of has uh, one of their flagship funding program, which is the uh, big, which you will hear a lot about uh, all the details from uh, Nitya. And uh, this is our appl application and selection process. It's a three-step process. Uh, and uh, you can get more about it uh, once you apply to us. And what's really in unique about uh, our incubator compared to others is we offer access to the state of the um, uh, nano fabrication center and uh, micro and nano characterization facility and also the packaging and systems engineering facilities at uh, Science Department. These are some of our incubators. As you can see, they work in cutting edge deep science technologies uh, related to uh, nanotechnology and the applications for nanotechnology in um, um, different aspects. Of one is on semiconductors, another one is medical, and the other one is for research community, and the third one is for the supercomputing or super um, conducting uh, photon detectors and we also have uh, some of our pre incubates which who are also going to be applying for the incubation at incense and this is the link we will post this uh, in our uh, linkedin page later and that's it about incense and i come back to um, our main program for today uh, which is basically uh, nitya is going to talk about uh, big which is a biotechnology ignition grant from BIRAC. Before I hand over the stage to Nitya, I just want to introduce her. She's a biotechnologist and she has a passion for uh, science and technology and uh, has a, uh, she's currently working as a, a program manager at uh, CCAMP. And uh, I also have put uh, some notes about uh, what is CCAMP for those of you who don't know. Uh, it's a kind of a platform for early stage innovative ideas in the domain of life sciences. So that's what uh, CCAMP does. And it's been one of the very successful uh, biotech incubator uh, within the within India, I would say, and definitely within the this region of the India. So coming back to Nitya, Nitya's specialities are genetics, molecular biology, plant, animal, and microbial technology. And she's considered herself as a team, team building, and also is very open to discuss any topics. With that, I would hand over the stage to Nitya. And uh, uh, San, uh, Sudeep, you're going to share the screen. I will stop sharing. Sure, sure ma'am. Um, I guess uh, so, um, on Nitya, thank you. it's working. So yeah. should I have to share the screen or? 
Uh, Sridhip, I'll take over. It's okay. I think I'll just share my slides. So I think it will go on well. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you, Dr. Tulasi, for a wonderful uh, introduction. I'll just uh, you know put over my screen now for sharing. Right. So uh, thank you, uh, one and all over here, for taking time off uh, your um, afternoon schedules. Uh, it is Saturday. Uh, I guess uh, with a brief uh, chat that I had with uh, Dr. Tulsi and her team, I understand that this is quite common for you to invest your uh, Saturdays on other sessions as well. So I am here uh, representing the entrepreneurship division at uh, CCAMP. Uh, primarily, we are now uh, having our flagship program, which is the Biotechnology Ignition Grant, uh, with a funding opportunity of about 50 lakhs INR. Mm. Uh, and uh, CCAM being one of the first, uh, you know, one of the big partners who have been associated with this grant since the first call. Uh, so we've been, we have successfully completed uh, participation in all the 18 calls thus far. Uh, we are now looking for applications for the 19th call uh, and the deadline rests till the 15th of September. So you've got about uh, a week and a half's time to actually put forth your innovative ideas with a strong commercial potential. Uh, we would uh, uh, request the startups which are less than five years old, uh, individual innovators or academic entrepreneurs to actually uh, pitch their ideas in this particular field. Uh, so uh, coming from the fact that it is a biotechnology ignition grant, uh, please, uh, uh, have bear in mind that uh, you not need not be a life science graduate or a biologist as such to apply for the scheme. You can come from a broad variety of, say, mechanical engineering or electronic engineering or even nanotechnology uh, to actually have an implication or an application uh, in life science. Uh, and your application may fall under either of the categories of medtech, biopharma, veterinary sciences, or even waste management. So anyone can apply to the scheme as long as you have a direct application into uh, either of these thematic areas, right? So um, primarily, uh, the biotechnology ignition scheme was uh, started by Bionac. And uh, it was for ideas with strong commercial potential and societal impact. Uh, you will be given about 18 months time to establish and validate a proof of concept of your work. So primarily after the 18 months, um, you will be looking at uh, reaching a stage where you will need some more data to facilitate some sort of uh, regulatory approvals, right? So primarily uh, because it is open to startups, uh, individual innovators who are graduates, as well as uh, academic uh, faculty members who are who want to take up an entrepreneurial route, uh, you can all apply in order to take your proposed solutions to the market. Uh, so these are some of the thematic areas that are uh, catered to by the Biotechnology Ignition Grant. Uh, individually or uh, interdisciplinary, like for example, we have seen a new wave of uh, AIML uh, tool being used as a critical tool in uh, validating, say, biomaterials or therapeutics. So you can have some results that you have seen in animal biotechnology and which may have a direct bearing to, say, nanosciences or something that crops up from nanosciences with uh, a direct impact on agriculture or industrial processes or products for that matter. So anything can come under biotechnology. It can be either core uh, of these uh, 12 fields that I mentioned here, or it can be quite interdisciplinary. So please, uh, to actually understand the scope of uh, the application of the biotechnology ignition grant, it is not for basic research. So by basic research, uh, there are a couple of things that you will have to bear in mind. So you have something called as a proof of principle. 
and you have something called as a proof of concept. Now, when you're coming from an academic background, both of these are actually um, spoken about quite interrelatedly. But uh, when it comes to the entrepreneurship grant like BIG, the proof of principle is something that validates that the idea might work. So first you have an idea that crops up and then you have some preliminary data that actually supports this idea might work. But you need some more data to actually gather the fact that it is actually plausible. Right. So uh, like, for example, uh, you want to test a plant for immunomodulatory activities. You will first have to have some preliminary data like antioxidant studies or uh, some sort of in vitro experimentation that validates anti cancer potential or, uh, you know, variations in immunoglobulin levels, etc. So it is something a little more than basic research, but it has very high level of innovation with some commercial prospect. Also, it cannot be catered to uh, ideas which need, say, systemic clinical trials, like, for example, trial runs to be, trials runs to be undertaken in, say, monkeys or dogs, uh, or for some sort of validation or certification of the technology. So the big grant is up to 50 lakhs. This is one of the few grants by the government of India where the money is directly, uh, you know, sent across to your account, to your bank account. It does not have any invested uh, potential like for example some sort of equity benefit or some sort of underwriting to this uh, you will not you will be given about 18 months time to validate the proof of concept and the money of 50 lakhs or uh, less can be used for travel salary ip filing working capital during the period purchase of equipment uh, and also conducting some sort of a limited market research in order to go in for regulatory trials later so as far as the eligibility is concerned, if you are an individual, you should be an Indian citizen and the primary applicant should be a project leader. The project leader uh, should have some sort of uh, an academic experience or an industry experience to actually cater to the r and component on his or her shoulders. If you are from that faculty, you will be requested for an NOC from your institute or university if you are employed in a company you will have to give us an undertaking that you will step down from the current position on awarding the grant now if you are a company then the startup should not be uh, less more than say five years old uh, 51 percent of the ownership should be held by resident indian citizens the project leader uh, whom you're nominating to uh, undertake the r d component of the work he or she must be a shareholder in the applicant company. Also, in addition to this, uh, the individual applicant should not hold any shares in any other biotech company, uh, pan India or globally for that matter. So there is something called as a royalty on the grant that has kicked in uh, from the last before call. So basically, uh, any um, awardee has to pay about 5% uh, royalty. But bear in mind, this is on the net sales of the proposed solution. So after the end of the 18-month period, immediately after, or during the 18-month period, there is no royalty or any other such undertaking or underlining feature that you will have to pay back to Bayrak. Uh, this 5% of royalty is to be paid uh, when you're hitting commercialization. So if you are following under the drug theme, you will have a very rigorous regulatory process that will follow after the 18 month duration, which might go on for maybe eight or 10 years after. So after 10 years or after three years or after four years of the grant, when you are generating profits out of your sales, you will have to pay the royalty. And- uh, Nitya? Yes. Uh, do we interrupt you or you want to take- a uh, any which way, if you have any immediate questions, it can be put forth or we can have a Q&A session later after the presentation. Hello. Okay. Uh, I saw somebody raising their hand. Yeah, because uh, I'm on the full screen mode. I don't think I'll be able to actually navigate with the chat window. Okay, so what I'll do is uh, please raise your hand and I will stop it intermediately uh, and then otherwise you put your questions, questions in the chat window. Okay. okay, 
So uh, the scheme proposal as such, the structure and the composition uh, weighs primarily on three main aspects. Because this is an entrepreneurship grant, you will need to have some sort of a business idea in place. So the idea or the concept of the grant which deals with the proposed solution should be novel. It should be impactful. It should have a feasibility to be completed in about 18 months time. And you should have an idea about who your you know, competitors would be uh, who are presently dealing with in the market. So when I say about novelty, it need not be something that is like, you know, a very new uh, Nobel Prize standard as such. Uh, but it can be something that tweaks the performance or the efficiency of the present players in the market. Like, for example, you have some sort of devices that come in. Uh, some sorts of sensor technologies that might come in that might, you know, reflect or give a direct visualization if a particular device needs uh, uh, some sort of an upgrade or, you know, some sort of an efficiency, like telling people that it, you know, clearly is at about 100% efficiency or something like that. Uh, you also have uh, need to have a team uh, with uh, technical strengths that is pertaining to the proposed solution. Um, like, for example, if you are dealing with something in agriculture or something with respect to robotics, uh, if you have team members who are in BSA Agri, it may add uh, to some sort of a value, but then you will need some mechanical engineer or some electrical engineer also on board in order to make the robot plausible to work. Um, you will need uh, scientific advisors who will cater to some sort of speed bumps on your way. Uh, CCAMP would be there for your interaction. The bio incubator where you are actually incubated, that will also be open for interaction. But we would advise that with respect to your proposal and your proposed solution, you need to have some scientific advisors. In addition to a scientific advisor, you will need a business advisor as well. At the time of application, however, if you do not have a business advisor in your uh, in your team as part of your team or so, you can have, uh, like, for example, uh, you can just mention in your proposal that you are in talks with a couple of people and you will be finalizing the business advisors uh, in the coming uh, couple of months or so. Uh, as a part of the team, if you are an individual who has, like, for example, taking your PhD thesis forward, uh, to uh, you know the entrepreneurship level, uh, we would suggest maybe you are a sole person who is actually applying to this particular proposal. Uh, we would suggest that you uh, mention in the manpower division of the proposal that uh, you know you will be recruiting a couple of people because you will need some sort of a backup. Uh, you can't be working in the lab all the time because you need to cater even to the business plan. So you will need some manpower and manpower is a part of the budget. So uh, the technical strength might include even people like, for example, you will have to identify what qualification you will be recruiting the people from. As part of the business plan, you need to have the buyer section, at least of the proposed solution in your market, uh, very open. Uh, we have usually two strategies with which people go ahead with. One is the business to business. Like, for example, your proposed idea may be uh, bought by, say, a pharma company or an agri company. Or it can be like a business to customer where like an end user like me can actually purchase it from you and uh, get something. Also, you should have in mind some sort of competition in the market. Like, for example, who are the present players in the field who are actually do catering to this? Um, so this is primarily the structure and the composition of the scheme or the proposal. So primarily while evaluating a particular proposal, as far as the idea is concerned, the idea is in which, you know, the entire um, aspect shifts. So you need to identify an unmet need in the market. You need to have a differentiation factor, like, for example, how better would be your proposed solution than the present um, players in the market and the technical viability as to whether this can be catered to in 18 months time and uh, at the end of 18 months will you be in a viable sol uh, position to actually take this forward uh, some amount of points are also given to the strength and the passion of the team and then uh, a critical qualifier in the business aspect is the commercialization potential whether or not it has commercialization potential is one of the critical aspects also is your commercialization strategy, like for example, whether you're going to license, whether it's going to be direct sales, whether it's going to be a B2B approach, whether it's going to be a B2C approach, et cetera. So this is primarily how the proposal is going to be evaluated on. Uh, so the, some of the components in the order is like, 
uh, you will have to give a summary of what the proposal is all about, uh, a, a very concise summary because most of these uh, components are with a word limit of say 200 words. Uh, you will have uh, something like uploading a concept note or uploading some alternate documents on place. So uh, on those levels, you can actually have some graphic illustrations that explain the concept better uh, when you're uploading the proposal. But as far as the written word limit goes, it's around 200 words. So we would suggest kindly stick to that. Uh, so the summary is basically like, for example, if you are uh, generating a point of care device for uh, say a specific uh, type of ovarian cancer, you need not include and say that, you know, give a statistical advantage telling that the ovarian cancer is very, uh, is a pertinent serious issue because everybody knows that, you know, one in 10 is actually susceptible to cancer nowadays. Uh, so uh, you will have to be very concise about the point of care kit rather than uh, how ovarian cancer is actually becoming a very huge um, uh, problem in, in today's society. Your objectives and approach to this particular study has to be taken very decisively. So the objectives would include the phases in which you are going to undertake the work. Primarily, we have about three to four objectives that are in place during the 18 months time. Uh, you will have to identify the novelty criteria in your proposal. So the novelty criteria is basically like how this particular proposed solution is going to make things better for the end user, be it pharma, uh, be it an industry or be it a, a customer. Uh, what sort of an opportunity do you see in commercializing this forward? Like for example, if there is a point of care device, as I said, for a specific type of ovarian cancer and we know one in 10 is actually going to be susceptible to cancer. So that is the opportunity that you see in, uh, you know, that is the population you will be catering to and that is the opportunity see, you see going forward. So we understand that every R&D uh, work um, has to be met with challenges and it will be met with challenges. So you need not be very hunky-dory about the fact that, you know, look, this is a foolproof strategy or something like that. You need to have some sort of alternate strategies in place in order, like when you see something, like when you foresee something that is, uh, that as a challenge, you will have to mention an alternate strategy as part of the proposal. Preliminary work is, uh, is mandatory but it depends upon the theme like for example if it is devices you have some sort of a electrical components in place that um, that shows that it might work but it needs tweaking it can be a part of preliminary work otherwise you need some strong r d data generated from in vitro studies to actually validate your entire working of the proof of concept so the preliminary work is something that falls between the idea and the proof of principle and big would cater to something between proof of principle to proof of concept. Uh, the end outcomes would be like what, like will it be a, like a platform technology? Would it be a knowledge based inter interaction that you would see, or whether it be a product, uh, commercial plan, as I said, B2B or B2C? Again, uh, whether anything is patentable should be actually put under the intellectual property. You can include about, say, pointed two or three references. Uh, to your entire proposal because we understand that every idea stems from published literature mostly, right? Uh, so uh, primarily uh, just detailing the components further, uh, you have the summary. So basically you will be targeting what the problem is, how your proposed uh, technology is actually going to solve the problem at least to about 75% of it and who are the currently available solutions presently in the market and how does your solution act better your concept notes can be say pictures pitch deck it can by pitch deck we need like a presentation and then maybe a summarize like a graphical illustration or some sort of data as far as the objectives of the proposed solution goes it will be like how you're facing your work to be uh, and with each objective comes uh, with a set of experiments you plan to uh, achieve each objective. In the novelty, um, it would be uh, critical to establish the differentiation of your proposed solution to the list of cons uh, competitors you have. Now, competitors can be either within India or global, and it can be direct competition or indirect competition. So by indirect competition, we mean like, for example, if there is uh, a, a component by uh, like for example an adult uh, pad or something like that that you are trying to come up with um, it will be a direct competition to uh, say all the existing players in the market 
but uh, if it is going to be something like a device it would be an indirect uh, competition because your device can be a whole package whereas all the other competitors might be uh, you know having some other features and you are just putting all the features into one so uh, you have direct or indirect competitors and you have either indian or global uh, competitors as well so primarily as as part of the competitive landscape basically it will be a differentiation so you have a description of the features of your product and your competitors products and uh, you need not mention like the market name of the competitors product you can just mention the company name if you are unsure and uh, you can just have different features like uh, strengths and drawbacks etc like for example yours might be a cheaper and effective alternative your uh, each, your proposed solution can actually increase the efficiency of the present uh competitors in the market by say 70% or so so you can just add those features here as far as the opportunity it is basically the gap in the market basically rough estimates of numbers etc and how much of the market can be impacted by your proposed solution uh challenges or risk factors are basically like alternate strategy of work as well as whether you need some regulatory clearances or ethical clearances to undertake part of your proposal because we understand some people would require say animal based studies or something like that to validate their proposed solution so they would need ethical clearance from the lab that they are going to do it so that will be a challenge like that is also seen as a challenge because that requires some administrative work etc so preliminary data has to be scientifically representative with uh you know proper data graphs or images so if you're having an image of say a microscopy image or something so we need the mag magnification parameter etc in it if you're showing us graphs then we need uh, you know the statistics or the standard error etc in it so it has to be very critically represented scientifically uh proposed end solution again is a clear understanding of whether it's going to be an end product whether it's going to be a service based model or whether it's been a, a technology based transfer again commercialization plan is where you identify who your customers are and what so ever your ip would be like for example if you um, go in and you uh, check for any existing related patents already in the market so we understand that you are hell bent on time right now for applying so we would say if you do not have any um, uh, you know direct access to a prior art search or something like that you can actually undertake a simple google search or a search engine use your web search engine to actually go in and uh, just check if you have any related patents etc and then cite important references from academics uh, these would be a milestones and work plan like for example milestone 1 2 3 a uh, usually on a six months basis and then you have the activities and the deliverables activity would be something like an antioxidant essay or some sort of activity like that and the deliverable will be an increase in the antioxidant potential or uh, working of a particular um, a circuit of an you know of a device or an electrical circuit of a device um so these are primarily the heads in which the budget is actually done so under uh, the equipment manpower and outsourcing it should not be more than 30% of the total budget so if you are going to go ahead with a 45 lakh budget it would be 30% of 45 lakhs right and for manpower you can utilize about 30% of the total budget provided each individual mentioned under manpower is not given a salary above 50000 rupees Uh, consumables and rentals do not have an upper limit ip cost is not more than 1.5 travel again is not more than 1.5 and contingency probably around 2.5 lakhs but definitely not more than 5% of the total budget so uh, primarily for the team uh, as i said uh, the project leader must hold shares in the company which is a criteria that has been given to us from the last call of big and uh, primarily scientific advisors uh, should have some sort of an essential expertise in execution of the product uh, like for example if you have a robotic solution but your scientific advisor can be two it can be one from the robotics domain and one from the agri domain or something like that you can have many scientific advisors but predominantly for big we would need at least one or two who are quite significantly impactful for your proposal uh as part of the team you need a project leader who will be the 
full point of contact through uh, the grant. Uh, you will have team members whom you can recruit. Again, you will have scientific advisors and business advisors. So uh, if you are a person who has applied for BIG uh, through any other partner and you are looking at applying via CCAMP, uh, you will have to include a comments received from your last application and uh, you will need to highlight how you have modified the proposal according to the comments received. So sometimes what happens is the reviewers might give comments that are quite different from what you have expected. So and if you do not uh, heed or you think that you need not heed to the comments by the reviewers, you will have to be polite and respectful in your responses. Uh, sometimes what happens is an individual innovator or a startup uh, has submitted to BIG, uh, but not awarded. And then in the present call of BIG, they are going ahead with another idea. Then you will have to mention the comments from the last application as you have received. But in your response, you can actually tell them that, uh, look, this is quite a different idea than what we had done before. And we are not going ahead with the idea mentioned in the previous call. So this is primarily the process of uh, the big scheme. So you have a national call, Pan India, which is open on the 1st of January and the 1st of July. So this uh, call, the 19th call, has been delayed by a month. So we have started on the 1st of August, and it will be going on till the uh, 15th of September. So that is the phase of the online application where CCAMP gives you a lot of mentoring as to how you have to give your idea, etc. There is an eligibility screening and the preliminary screening after that, which is undertaken by CCAMP. Then uh, the um, proposal is given for technical review to online reviewers, basically reviewers who are very thematic and very focused on those particular themes. Uh, you will have a round of presentations once you have cleared the online review round. Uh, in front of the technical evaluation panel, which is again theme based. And then you have the, the award of the grant, and then you have the financial due diligence and the funding and incubation processes that are undertaken up to that. So um, all this is done uh, through a period like, for example, uh, if you have applied to this call, you can uh, take, it takes about six months of time uh, to actually end the process of getting awarded or reaching due diligence. Because uh, please understand that this is uh, a grant that gives you money directly into your bank account. So we from CCAMP has to have to be very uh, pertinent in our execution as to making you eligible, making you uh, clear the screening committee, etc. And uh, we will be the focal point of voice to Bayrax from your side. So if you have any comments or suggestions, we would be the point of contact. So uh, if you are a startup or if you want to start your startup journey, kindly connect with CCAMP. These are some of the startups and individuals who have been uh, you know, associated with us for about uh, seven years now. Bear in mind that we are a decade old. Um, so some of them like Bugworks and uh, C6 Energy and Bubble, Nutwash, etc. have already reached commercialization. Uh, and uh, we have some P like Spotsense, Pronte and Empathy Design Labs who are uh, having a critical, uh, you know, going through critical phase of their work in actually getting global impact in uh, mother health. Uh, as I said, these are some of the uh, domains which uh, CCAMP actually caters to. So if you have any ideas which are interdisciplinary or uh, pure uh, disciplinary, you can actually just shoot an email to us. Uh, so we have funding opportunities right from early stage funding to accelerated funding where you have reached or clear different regulatory levels. So we have about 25 lakhs of uh, funding per startups to about 2.2 CR. And uh, this is some of the impact that CCAMP has had over the years, something that we are very proud of. Uh, so we also have about 20 plus life science or healthcare products already in the market, generating revenue and profits. And uh, we have about 70 plus startups who have been associated with us um, for follow on funding as well as funded and incubated, accelerated and advanced. We have been associated with about 200 plus startups. So uh, kindly get in touch with us at, uh, you know, you can go through our website, which is ccamp.res.in. Or uh, if you need any sort of, you know, if you just need a discussion with us or uh, through your point of view, just discuss your idea with us. Kindly email us so that we can allot some time to you. Uh, please bear in mind that all the employees at CCAMP are actually having an NDA agreement with CCAMP as well as Bayrax. So all your ideas are actually held very close to the heart. 
we don't show our cards out so until unless you want us to so uh, kindly shoot us an email at uh, ckm underscore big at uh, ckm dot res dot in for any further uh, clarification suggestions comments anything of that sort so this is like the end of my presentation uh, i am open to taking questions at the moment so hello everyone uh, this is uh, sudeep uh, so we would uh, look forward to take questions from the end of uh, participants and attendees and if you have any questions you can address it and ma'am will put forward the answer so i'll just put up the point of contact from c camp also over here in the chat box so the just the mail id so that you guys can just get in touch with us at c camp open to questions now please So is there any question from the student end? Uh, we are happy to accept. So um, Mukul Sagar has actually proposed a question. It says, does CCAMP help in proposal writing aspects? Uh, Mukul, actually, we are open to your proposal writing aspects. Uh, we, uh, I would be sharing uh, a, a user guide kind of a format uh, to um, uh, Dr. Tulsi and maybe she can you know, send it across to you. So that is basically how the proposal uh, and the aspects of BIG are actually covered. Alternatively, you can actually go to BIRAC website, that is B-I-R-A-C, and just type B-I-R-A-C, B-I-G application on your uh, web search engine, and you will be directed to the uh, proposal writing. So once uh, you have drafted your proposal or you are having an idea of drafting the proposal, you don't know how to go forward with it, uh, you can just shoot us a mail and we will get back to you at the earliest. I am not giving out my personal professional email ID because uh, as you know, we are hand handling multiple events and multiple meetings back to back. So uh, if you just contact us at ccamp underscore BIG, uh, we will, one person of the team will be uh, readily getting uh, responded to you and you will be, uh, you know, um, directed to one mentor and then it is very curated after that. So um, you can send us your idea, you can send us your proposal, uh, any which way that you want, and uh, we can help you from there. The buy-in is asking, does Bayrak have a limit on the number of companies they can award to one partner? No, they don't. Uh, the, what uh, Bayrak actually sees is that uh, you have a technical feasibility to undertake the proposal in 18 months. And whether this proposed solution has uh, a concept of uh, gaining commercialization potential after 18 months or after uh, you know the regulatory approvals, etc. So uh, as far as your idea or your proposed solution is sound, you can apply uh, through one partner. But bear in mind, your application should go ahead with one DIG partner, say CCAMP. It cannot be you know, um, applied through multiple big partners. It has to come through one DIG partner. Uh, but as far as a limit on the number of companies goes, there is none like that. There's nothing like that. Is it really important that CCAMP incubates the companies that apply for big BIG? No, no. CCAMP is only a big implementing partner. As in, like, for example, uh, your entire application of big is undertaken by CCAMP. Uh, uh, once you are awarded the funding, uh, the milestone reports, etc., has to be via CCAMP. And uh, CCAMP will be, uh, you know, basically your point of contact for your entire biotechnology ignition grant. As far as incubation for undertaking the R&D component of your study goes, you can be incubated at any bio incubator, say incense or anywhere else. So uh, you can be incubated with anyone, but bear in mind that the incubator that you choose 
must have the facilities to undertake the R&D component. That is all we see. It is not mandatory that you will have to, you know, just because you apply through CCAM, you need to have a space at CCAM to undertake the R&D component. You can be incubated and at Incense, provided you can undertake the R&D component at Incense. That's all we see. The space should uh, be uh, a viable option for you to undertake the R&D component. You can be incubated at Incense or any other bio incubator. Not an issue. Can we apply for BIG at an idea stage? Yes, Neetu, you can. Uh, BIG can be applied for an idea stage grant. But um, bear in mind that the idea must stem from something uh, foolproof. So if you are uh, going to be something that you know, that are into the drugs, uh, primarily the drug theme, we will need some sort of preliminary data like say antioxidant assays or something like that to actually uh, cater to your uh, your idea. Otherwise, you need to have a strong backing of um, an academic uh, published paper. Or uh, if your idea is coming from the need of the hour that needs immediate interest in the face of the company, you can apply for BIG. So any of these can be applied at an India stage. Mukul Sagar is asking, has CCAMP has R&D labs for biotechnology? Uh, yes, we do. We have different high-end uh, technological resources that uh, uh, if pertinent to your project can be, a proposed solution can be catered to. Uh, we run it on a service mode. So um, with respect to your idea, if you uh, want to look at, have a look at the technology resources that we have at CCAMP, I would request you kindly just email us so that we can put you in touch with the services team and uh, you can take it forward from there. Because every proposed solution has a very curated approach for the R&D uh, labs and the R&D equipment that is required to validate the proof of concept. So we will have to understand what your idea is. You will not be able to discuss that directly over here at a platform which is not signed by many for an NDA, et cetera. So if you are giving us an email, uh, and everybody at CCAM has signed an NDA, so we can as well be open with what we have and what you can, how you can use our facility. So, do we have any more questions from the audience? Can you help us understand better how to create similar NDAs? NDAs for what? For NTIASC, I think they already have a wonderful NDA uh, at NTIASC. But if you want us uh, to help you, we can definitely do that. Definitely. Uh, there is somebody called Sandhya uh, who's actually held her hand up. Sandhya, you can go ahead you and can ask. Just unmute yourself and ask the question, Sandhya. If... Don't know, ma'am. I can't actually hear her. Uh, Sudeep, can, did you catch the question? It, neither could I. Uh, Sandhya, can you uh, ask the question again? Or if not, type the question on the chat. Hello? She's on mute. Sandhya, you're on mute. Uh, you have to unmute yourself. OK, in the interim, any further questions? Uh, Sandhya, if you have a question, either please uh, type on the chat or unmute yourself and speak. Okay. 
I guess uh, she has some technical issues on her end. Okay, uh, not an issue, Sandhya. You can just uh, get in touch with me or uh, Dr. Tulasi via email uh, once the network issue is sorted. Not an issue. So, any more questions from? So Mukul what, has more questions. What is Seekan's minimum grant requirements? A mail shot to the email provider shall work as an initiator. Minimum grant requirements. So uh, primarily at Seacamp, we have uh, different funding opportunities that range from 25 lakhs to 2.5, 2.2 crores presently. And we are also in talks with uh, Government of India and Government of Karnataka to uh go in with uh, grants that are lesser than 25 lakhs especially uh to generate some sort of proof of principal data etc so that is in talks right now not finalized uh, so everything is initiated with one some sort of an official correspondence with us uh, i am not barging you or i am not uh, you know putting too much of information about our all our um our point of um uh, contacts email IDs or my personal professional email ID. If I give out one email ID from ccamp underscore bake at ccamp.res.in, it reaches better. People can remember it better, and we will just, you know, internally at ccamp, we can just uh, forward the information to the respected team. Uh, now, uh, as far as uh, uh, an email being an initiator, uh, we would actually prefer a physical interaction, but that is not exactly possible in these pandemic times. And also the fact that NCBS and um, CCAMP are now presently running on uh, restricted entry into the campus, uh, I think as is IISC. Uh, so preference would be a physical talk, a physical interaction, happiness to both sides. Uh, but this is all we can do right now. So this is the maximum that we can give out. So it is uh, ccamp underscore big at ccamp.res.in and uh, we can take it forward from there. Uh, so Mukul has a question here. Will NTISC help us in applying to T camp in the meantime? Uh, definitely, Mukul. Uh, we are connected with uh, Nitya, ma'am, and we also have a separate uh, branch in our team, which actually helps uh, for the students to uh, align them with the initiatives which they want to pursue. So definitely, we will help you guys to apply to the C camp in meantime. Th thank you. Any more questions from the audience? Uh, Mukul, if you could just put up in the chat box or, uh, you know, uh, over mic as to uh, what your, um, uh, you know, your, I mean, academically, uh, what is your qualification or what position you hold presently? It just helps us understand you better, that's all. Any other questions in the meantime? Masters in Material Sciences from ISC. Wonderful. Great to connect with you. Uh, looking forward to your email. As is entire. Thank you. Any other questions, please? So any other questions? So, looks like none right sudip yeah then i guess we can conclude this event so first of all um we specifically want to thank uh, nitya ma'am for coming on our platform and providing this insightful talk it would definitely provide uh, horizontal opportunities for the student community within isc as and outside isc as well Right. And to Tulasi, ma'am, uh, with whom we worked together to make this event happen. Uh, 
i want to thank all the attendees for being the for being a part of this auspicious event and definitely we lo look forward to have you on more of our talks in the future and yes. we hope you have picked uh, uh, a lot of insights from this talk which will eventually help you to take quality decisions in the future regarding your career industrial uh, strength or your entrepreneurial uh, uh, steps which you are aspiring to take uh, by saying this we are concluding this session thanks a lot uh, nitya ma'am for Thank being you. a part of this thanks uh, so i am really glad that dr tulsi can actually uh, fit in a session today because i understand that you know it was quite the last moment and uh, there were a lot of uh, things that we had to look for because the grant call is actually closing on the 15th of september so thank you do a lot uh, dr tulsi to actually um, you know get a session in uh, especially at the end of this week uh, i would also like to thank sudeep for actually navigating through and helping me understand uh, the whole uh, you know sharing the screen etc we did have a couple of issues but then thank you for being patient with that um, i thank all of the uh, almost we had around i think 35 participants in this meeting thank you everyone uh, i mean the big call is open uh, every six months so even if you are in like your first uh, years of masters or just going to complete your graduation, uh, bear in mind that there is a biotechnology ignition grant that you can go ahead with. Uh, also, uh, please make sure that um, you and your peers understand that uh, entrepreneurship or bio entrepreneurship is also fast gaining a lot of mobility in India. And we are looking forward to a wonderful scientific discussion interaction with each and every one of you at CCAMP as well as at NIISC. Uh, hopefully the next time we have a physical interaction, I'm really looking forward to that. So thank you so much and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, Sudeep. Thank you, Nidhya. And I hope uh, some of the audience will actually get the big grant. That'll be really wonderful. It'll be the icing on the cake. Thank you so thank much. You. Yeah. yeah, bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye.